Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Hi, good evening, Dr. Evelyn Songko at sa mga viewers ng ating Bridges. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Again. Another... And hello, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to our uh, viewers on Bridges here on C. Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Hi, good evening, Dr. Evelyn Songko at sa mga viewers ng ating Bridges. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Again. Another... And hello, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to our uh, viewers on Bridges here on CBRC.tv. Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning to all our viewers around the world. I am Evelyn Sonko and I'm your host this evening. Together with me is uh, attorney Dwight Ramos. And actually this uh, show is brought to you by the College of Accountancy Alumni Association and the USC Alumni Association. So, Attorney Dwight, I don't know if Attorney Dwight is ready now. Hello, Attorney Dwight. Hi, good afternoon, good evening, yes. and good morning, uh, Miss Evelyn, and to all our viewers worldwide. So, I'm happy to be back and uh, <laughs> here at Bridges. Wow, last Sunday, na miss mo ba ako? Na miss kita. Kasi wala tayong oh, no, show man. last Sunday, di ba? Yes, but uh, of course, we had a very nice uh, occasion uh, last Sunday naman to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oo nga talaga. I was so touched sa mass which launched the 500 uh, YOC. Nakakatuwa, di ba? Nakakatuwa ang pakinggan yung mga sinabi ni Pope Francis at saka ni Cardinal Tagle. Uh, talagang natouch ako sa kanila. At saka, alam mo yon yung naririnig mo? Filipino yes. songs. In Vatican, yes. in ba? Ang ganda. Yes. At uh, all, all praises sila, of course, sa mga Pilipinos and sa mga uh, OFWs natin. Oh, that's true. Oo nga, sila talaga yung parang missionary din, ano? Sharing right. in the evangelical work of the church. Ang dami yes. nga din, mga katuwa. Mm -mm. Pero tonight yes. naman, babawi tayo. Because we're going to have a conversation about a very important thing that every citizen should know. Ito yung, syempre, taxes. Buwis. Oo, naman. <laughs> Oo. Napakahalaga nito sa buhay. Yeah. Yes. Napakahalaga because, nito sa buhay natin. Oo. Diba? Yes. Because it's alam the mo, time of the year again. Oo. Oo. And of course, alam ko, you know very well our guests. Diba? Uh, oh, pala, na, matagal mo rin siyang nakasama. Kaya... Ikaw na yung magpakilala, Attorney Dwight. Okay ba sa'yo? You can introduce oh. her now. Okay. Oh, naman, syempre. Uh, always my pleasure to introduce uh, our special guest, especially tonight, na kasama natin siya sa UST Faculty of Civil Law. And uh, oh. of course, the tax practice, eh, kilalang mm -hmm. kilalang rin siya because she served as uh, an assistant commissioner of the Bureau of Internal Revenue. And we're talking about none other than Attorney Yufrosina M. Sakdalan Casasola, or to us, uh, simply Attorney Frosi is our guest tonight. Uh, yes, she has to come in, but uh, yan. So yes. Attorney Frosi, good evening. Good evening, good Attorney Boy. And good afternoon, yes. Good evening, and, uh, Dr. Evelyn. At uh, magandang gabi uh, sa ating uh, mga manonood dito sa cbrc.tv. Yes. And Welcome attorney to the Frosty. show, attorney. Yes, attorney Frosty. Yes. Yes. At and uh, yeah. 
welcome to the show. Yes. Salamat, maraming salamat. She's an expert uh, on the subject of taxation, no? and she graduated uh, from the UST Faculty of Civil Law, and she has been a professor, lecturer, and bar reviewer on taxation law in various universities and bar review centers. Uh, and uh, uh, a pre-bar reviewer also taxation law UST, of course, uh, and she teaches taxation law in the University of the East uh, Graduate School of Business. Uh, she has published uh, several books on taxation. Attorney Casasola or Attorney Frosty was the Assistant Commissioner of the Bureau of Internal Revenue until she retired. And she served as treasurer uh, of our association, the UST Law Alumni Foundation, for six years. That was from 2014 to 2020. So let's all welcome Attorney Frosty tonight. Thank you. Maraming salamat. Welcome. Oh, oh. Attorney Frosty, nako, alam ko maraming matututunan ang ating mga viewers dito sa ating uh, pag-uusapan ngayong gabi. Uh, kasi taxation eh. Maraming gustong makaalam kung ano ba yung mga tamang uh, pagbabayad ng buwis. Kasi ito malaki ang maitutulong sa ating pamahalaan. I think unang-una nating pag-usapan yung mga iba-ibang klase ng mga buwis. Di po ba merong, mara may merong mga ganong classifications? Can you tell us what are the different kinds of taxes? Actually, we have two big groups of taxes here in the Philippines. We have first we have national taxes, and the other one is uh, local taxes. The mm -hmm. national taxes are being collected by the Bureau of Internal Revenue, and these are income taxes. Then we have estate and donors taxes, the value added tax, the other percentage tax, the uh, uh, excise tax and documentary stamp tax. These are the only taxes being collected by the Bureau of Internal Revenue. On the part of the Bureau of Customs, uh, they uh, collect the taxes on importation and we call it tariff and customs duties. Now, on the part of the local government, each local government unit in the, in the, uh, uh, in the Philippines, like the uh, provinces, the cities, and the municipalities also collect taxes. And these are the local government taxes and the real property taxes. Mm, pala po yun. So there are three uh, groups also that collect yes. taxes. National yes. government, yung uh, Bureau of Customs, and then yes. local government. I yes. see. Okay. Yes. Uh, and, uh, yes, Attorney Dwight? Yes, and of course, kaya naman natin pinag-uusapan ng taxation ngayon is it's because it's already the tax filing season. Uh, malapit mm -hmm. na because it's already April. And uh, alam naman natin kahit may pandemic, uh, kailangan itong obligasyon natin to file uh, our returns and pay our taxes uh, still applies. Uh -huh. So punta tayo sa income taxation that uh, Attorney Prosi uh, mentioned to us. Uh, Attorney Frosty, pwede bang bigyan mo kami ng, uh, ng knowledge about the income taxation that we should be paying? Actually, may bagong memorandum na inilabas ang Bureau of Internal Revenue at ito ang RMC 4-2021. Ito ay tungkol sa filing of the annual income tax return and the payment of the income tax. So, meron tayong tatlong paraan ng pagpa-file ng income tax return. We do it by electronic uh, filing and payment. Then, uh, we also do it by EFPS. Ano ba ibig sabihin na EFPS? That is Electronic Filing and Payment System. And yung hindi qualified doon sa dalawa, sa electronic filing and the electronic filing and payment, nila ay mapupunta dito sa manual filing, especially yung mga mga bagets na hindi marunong mag-file ng, ng electronically, dito sila mapupunta sa manual filing. So how do we do this? Uh, meron tayong tinatawag na electronic BIR forms na makikita natin sa, dito sa website ng BIR. So they have to download that EBIR forms 
and fill it up electronically sa kanilang mga computers. And then, magbabayad sila through the AABs. The AABs are the uh, authorized agent banks. Now, yung, yung walang AABs sa kanilang lugar, pwedeng magbayad sa RCOs. RCOs are Revenue uh, Collection Officers. Meron ding paraan ng pagbabayad sa ePay or ePay through the ePayment portal of the BIR by clicking the ePay and pay through GCash or PayMaya. Uh, social na ngayon ng BIR. Oo nga. Meron din mga GCash, GCash na ganun. So, ang pangalawa ay yung electronic uh, uh, filing and payment system. Hindi ito ginagamit ng marami. Ang nakagagamit nito ay yung mga large taxpayers, yung top 20,000 private corporation, yung top 5,000 individuals, yung mga NGAs, national government agencies, yung mga enterprises enjoying fiscal incentives and the top taxpayers. So, mayroong yung sa EFPS, kailangan mo bang magpa-register or magpa-enroll sa bangko para ikaw ay makapagbayad doon sa EFPS. Alright. So, yung hindi lahat qualified dito, magbabayad sila through manual filing. Ano yung man manual filing? Susulatan natin ang ating mga forms at uh, either kukunin natin yung doon sa EBIR forms or doon sa totoong form ng BIR. So, susulatan natin manually and magpabayad din tayo manually sa bangko, sa AABs. Now, the BIR, however, is encouraging everybody to file electronically their returns through the EBIR forms. Especially now na pandemic, hindi oh tayo pwede lumabas na lumabas. So, nasa bahay lang tayo, makakapag-file tayo at makakapag-pay din tayo. Okay? Mm -mm. Yan ang nakasaadya sa RMC 4-2021. Oh, I see. Yun po pala. Bago lang po yung RMC-2021. Bago oh, lang po. Okay. This year lang yun. Nakalabas lang po ngayon yan, 2021. Ngayon lang. Oh, I see. So, dati po hindi electronic. So, ngayon, pwede ng electronic. Yung individual, yung, yung income tax return ng individual, yes. pwede yes. na pong electronic yun. Pwede na po. O, ito matagal oh, na lang. Every year kasi, nag-i-issue ang BIR ng circulars para paalalahanan ang mga taxpayers na ito ang mga paraan kung paano magpa-file ng income tax return. Yan. Yeah. So kailan ang deadline nito? Ang oh, maganda kasi hindi na sila hindi na sila mag-uunahan doon at mipila, 'di ba? At early yes, oh, oh. oh, Mahirap oh. po sa bangko kasi ang daming yeah. tao doon. Right. Ang tanong ni Attorney Dwight kung hanggang kailan? Yes, ang yes. file ng income tax return, meron po tayong deadline hanggang April 15, 2021. Now, wala pang sinasabi ang bureau kung mag extend ba? Pero huwag tayong maghantay kung mag extend sila or hindi. Kasi kung hindi sila mag-extend, tayo ay malalate. So pag nalate tayo, tayo ay mapepenalize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mahirap yun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ang computation naman nito. Yeah. Ah, yung pagkukompute ng income tax. Now it depends, the computation depends on whether the taxpayer is a pure compensation income earner or uh, a minimum wage earner or a purely self-employed individual or professional or a mixed income earner. Magkakaiba po ang paraan ng pagkocompute ng income tax return ng mga individual taxpayers under the train law. Ngayon lang po mm -hmm. inilagi ito sa train law noong starting 2018. So, binago ng train law ang pagbabayad ng income tax return ng mga, ay, income tax ng mga individuals. So, let's start with the computation of the taxable income of a pure compensation income earner. First, actually, yung mga pure compensation income earners, pwede, pwede silang hindi mag-file ng return if 
they are qualified to be substituted filing. Ano man tinatawag na substituted filing? Ito yung pag ikaw ay pure compensation income earner tapos isa lang ang iyong employer and kasi nagwi-withhold ang employer natin ang ating withholding tax. Pag nag-equal yung withholding natin sa kayong tax due, wala na tayong babayaran. So kung wala tayong babayaran, hindi na tayo magpa-file ng income tax return. So, mm. sila, hindi sila na kailangan mag-file. But, yung mga hindi makakomply dito sa requirements, kailangan silang mag-file ng income tax return. Kaya ano bang form ang ginagamit? Gumagamit sila ng form 1700. Okay. So, how do we do this? We need to determine first the gross compensation income. Then we deduct the mandatory deductions. And what are these mandatory deductions? We have the uh, here in the G our employee's contribution in the GSIS or SSS, the PhilHealth, the Pag-IBIG, and the Union Dues. So, ibabawas natin yon. Plus, meron tayong tinatawag na the minimis benefits, the 13th monthly, and other benefits in the amount of 90,000 pesos. Pag na-deduct natin to, makukuha na natin si taxable income. Once we determine already the taxable income, we can compute now our income tax, the, the income tax due rather, by multiplying it with the graduated income tax rate, which is found under section 24A2A of the tax code. Then we deduct the withholding on compensation. Yung na-withheld sa atin ang ating employers, ididedact natin doon. So, makikita na natin kung tayo ay may refundable o merong pabayaran. That is in the case of pure compensation income earners. Next. Yeah. Uh -huh. Next. Uh -huh. Alright. So, ito yung sinasabi kong tax table. Itong tax table na ito ay bago at ito ay effective lang hanggang December 31, 2022. Sa 2023, magkakamero na tayo ng bagong tax table. Na makikita natin dito sa tax table na to, na yung first 250,000 taxable income is subject to 0%. Meaning, wala kang babayaran pag ang taxable income, as in taxable na after deducting all these deductions na sinabi ko kanina, yung first 250,000 will be ex will be subject, it's not exempt, but 0% meaning my rate siya, kaya lang siya ay 0. So doon na lang sa susunod na layer, doon na mag start yung 20, 25, 30, 32, and the highest is 35. So yan ang paraan ngayon ng pagkocompute ng income tax ng mga in no, pure compensation income earners. Next. Now, in the case of minimum wage earners, Yung bang minimum wage earners is eh, subject to income tax? No. Under the law, under Republic Act 9504, minimum wage earners are exempt from income tax. So, paano natin determine kung ang isang tao ay minimum wage earner? Kung ang kita niya sa daily wage niya ay the statutory minimum wage. Paano natin siya malalaman? Sa bawat region, so, buong Pilipinas, mayroon sariling statutory minimum wage. Dito sa NCR, ang minimum wage natin dito ay 537. So, kung ang sinusweldo ng isang tao ay 537, siya ay isang minimum wage earner. So, wala siyang babayarang income tax. Now, hindi lang sa statutory minimum wage ang exempt, but including the overtime pay, the holiday pay, the hazard pay, and the night shift differential pay. So lahat ng kikitain niya dito ay exempt sa income tax. Now, next. Mm -hmm. Meron ba? Ayan, yung uh, oh, night shift. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, night shift. Gusto ko lang pinabi ng minimum wage earner kung totally exempt siya sa income tax. Si minimum wage yeah. earner kasi... So, Pwede meron siyang kitain na taxable income like 
kung umikita siya ng komisyon, that is a taxable income dahil hindi siya kasama doon sa sinabi nating lima. Okay? So, ah, kung kumita okay. siya, kung kumita siya kunyari ng, sa, sa buong isang taon ng 200,000, it's a taxable income. Now, will he still, will he be subject to income tax? Hindi pa rin. Why? He kasi nandun pa lang sa first layer na the first 250,000 is subject to 0%. Di ba? So, kung 200 lang, 200,000 lang ang kanyang commission, <coughs> wala pa siyang babayaran income tax. Okay? Ah, okay. So, kung, so, kung sumobra na siya, kunyari, 300,000 pala ang kinita niya sa commission niya, babayaran niya ba yung buong 300,000? No, the first 250,000 is zero. So, doon lang siya mag-start sa 50, 50,000 times 20%. So, yun lang ang babayaran ah. niya. So, Ganun pala yun. Mm -hmm. So, attorney, may tanong ako. Attorney, isa hindi siya magbabayad ng income tax. Yes. Pero, mag-ano uh, mag, 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 pa rin ba siya ng form magsasubmit sa and BNR? Then, hindi kasi, na yan. Kasi si minimum wage earner ay isang empleyado. So, mm -hmm. lahat ng exempt, nagpa-file naman si employer lahat nito. So, meron ah. sila na 1604 CF plus uh -huh. ito lang 2316, sinafile din ni BIR, ay ni, ni employer kay BIR. So, kasi naman uh -huh. na siya doon sa pinafile na yun. And parang nandun sila sa substituted filing na hindi na kailangan mag-file uh -huh. ng income tax return. Ah, I see. At, at yung so, form na yun. Yes. Sige. Yes. So, yung uh, ma maon na lang ako, attorney Dwight, ha? Okay. <laughs> yung Diba meron siyang, uh, halimbawa, 250, kumita siya ng 250, hindi yon taxable. Kung nagkaroon siya ng commission na, halimbawa, yung sinabi niyo kanina, na halimbawa 300, yung 250, eh pero Walang... may basic pay pa siya eh. May basic pay pa siya, attorney. Tapos, nagkaroon siya ng commission na 300,000. So, yung basic pay niya, plus 300,000, yung omegzes doon sa 250 na nasa bracket, yun yung babayaran niya. Yun la, yun yung first 250 wala walang bayad. Okay. Yun lang uh -oh. 50,000, yun yung masasubject sa 20% uh, income tax. Oo. Uh -huh. Tapos oh, it means kung meron siyang no nag-withdraw ay withdraw and ano batawag doon. Uh, tax holding. withdrawal. Uh, with holding, with holding, I'm sorry, withdraw, with holding tax, uh, at kinuha na yon ng kumpanya, hindi na rin siya magpapay. Actually, hindi, po hindi, po, hindi po siya we withdraw dan ni company kasi nga po siya ay exempt. Yes. Hindi uh, siya we withdraw dan. Siya talaga yung magpapayad. Uh -oh. Ang isang, ang isang uh, regular employee, na kumikita ng 250,000 ay 0%, di ba? Kaya ang isang empleyado na regular, hindi MW, hindi minimum wage earner, na kumikita ng 685 pesos a day, hindi, hmm. hindi po yan wini-withholdan ng employer. Kasi nga, at the end of the year, wala, namang, wala siyang babayarang income tax. Exemption, exemption. Exemption. So, 685 a day na empleyado mm -hmm. ay hindi na sa subject sa withholding tax. Kaya si minimum wage earner, totally, hindi siya na sa subject sa withholding tax. Yes. Uh, in other words, doktora, ay, attorney, pag, hindi, yung, yung ako minimum wage earner ako, Hindi ako nag na, wala akong withholding tax. Hindi ako nagbabayad ng tax. Paano ako nagko-contribute sa pamahalaan? Ano yung share ko sa growth ng pamahalaan, sa development ng pamahalaan? Yung eh, bus ba 'yon? Kasi po kinoconsider ng batas na yung isang minimum wage earner napakahirap na niya. Kasi oh. dahil sa ating mga bilihin ngayon, hindi na natin ko kayang bumili ng so much. So, kung kumikita tayo ng 537 a day and we have four children, saan natin Ay, dahil, anong mali natin? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kaya, so, yeah. 
Kaya in example ang mga minimum wage earners sa income tax. Yeah. Pero pag may bibilhin ho sila na meron ding tax na uh, nakapasok, doon sila nagko-contribute. Doon sila nagko-contribute, but uh, uh, yun naman ay kasama talaga sa, sa presyo noong binibili oh, natin. You know? oh, oh. Kasi hindi yeah. naman lahat ng bilhin natin ay mayroong bat. Mayroong oh, yeah. uh, bat. Mayroong bat. Mayroong bat. Attorney Dwight? Okay. Yes, moving forward, doon pa sa purely compensation income ang, ang earning niya. Is there any other consideration, uh, Attorney Fossey, in computing? In computing? Uh, yes. Kanina, kanina sinabi ko na... Oh, uh, yan. Are, are we talking of pure compensation self income or self-employed? Self purely self-employed naman. Purely self-employed. Okay. Let's go to the purely self-employed individuals and professionals. Sino ba ang mga ito? Ito yung my business. These are the ones who are engaged in business or practice of profession. Now, do sa train law, mayroong bagong tax regime na naman. Ngayon lang to in-introduce a train law. Na isang purely self-employed individual and a professional whose gross sales or gross receipts do not exceed 3 million pesos can elect to pay the income tax by just using one tax rate, and this is the 8% flat income tax rate, okay? That is in excess of 250,000, meaning since the basis of this is whether or not the, the self-employed is uh, uh, his gross income or gross receipts exceeds or not exceed 3 million pesos. So in this case, yung ina-allow na gumamit ang 8% flat income tax rate ay yung whose gross yield services do not exceed 3 million pesos. Now, sabi dito, uh, in excess of 250,000. So if your gross yield services do not exceed 3 million pesos, you can still deduct the 250,000. So your tax base is 2,750,000 and you multiply it by 8. That's the only tax that you need to pay. You don't even need to pay your percentage tax because that 8% is in lieu of the graduated income tax rate and also the 3% a 3% percentage tax. Now, if you uh, if you opt to use this uh, graduated tax table, yung kaninang pinakita natin na pataas ng pataas hanggang 35% then you still need to pay the 3% other percentage tax other than the income tax of the using the graduated income tax rate. Yeah. Diyos yeah. ko, <laughs> alam mo, so, Attorney Dwight, uh, ang dami nating dapat itanong kay, kay, ano, no, kay Attorney. Baka merong mga tanong ang ating viewers. Ito yeah. konti na lang ang ating time. Tingnan yeah, na natin kung that, merong tanong. Yeah, but but before that, of course, we talked about uh, the purely compensation, tapos yung self-employed. Uh -oh. Ano kung mixed? Okay. Uh, we, got uh -oh. the, we got to the mixed income earner. Yung namang mixed income earner, sila yung may dalawang klaseng income. Meron silang compensation income, meron din silang uh, income from the practice of profession or on their business. Okay. So, iba ang pagkocompute nito. In all cases, yung compensation income, ginagamit natin si graduated tax table yung kanina. That kasi compensation income yun. And gagamitin natin yung first 150,000 is zero. Okay? So, nandun yun sa compensation income. But for the business income, mag-apply din dito si are you, is your gross sales or is it uh, does your gross as uh, uh, is over three million pesos or not? So if it's not, if it's less than three million pesos, you can also use the eight percent, but only in so far as your income from the practice of profession or from your business is concerned. Hindi kasama si compensation income. And the difference between this one in the mixed income earner and the purely self-employed is here. We cannot deduct any more than 250,000 sa ating gross sales or gross receipts. What is the reason? The reason is because we have already used the, the 250,000 in our compensation income. 
So here we determine separately the income tax, the income tax for the compensation and the income tax for uh, the practice or profession or engaging in business. Magkaiba, magkaiba sila. Okay, so magkaiba we, din po ang form. Magkaiba din po ang yeah, form. Magkaiba din po ang form. Pag ginagamit natin si, si 8%, ang form po na ginagamit sa annual income tax return ay 1701A. May letter A sa dulo. Whereas yung, yung hindi gumagamit ng 8%, it's 1701. Yan po. Iba-iba po ang form na, na ginagamit. <laughs> Marami pa tayong kailangan malaman, Attorney Dwight. Siguro ikaw mas alam mo. Kaya lang, wala na tayong time. Oo uh, nga eh. But uh, very, very shortly na lang, uh, Attorney Prosy, uh, is it safe to say na every worker should pay uh, the income tax or should file the, the uh, income tax return? Well, it, de it depends on, on whether the, the, uh, the taxpayer is required under the law is required or not required to file the income tax return now every every resident citizen is sub is required to file an income tax return on the income he derives within and without the philippines yun pag ikaw ay isang resident citizen dito ka naninirahan talaga Yung income mo, wherever, wherever situated or wherever you you get your income, you have to file an income tax return. Now, so what about the non-resident citizens? In the case of non-resident citizens, he is uh, required to file in his income tax return only on the income he derives within the Philippines. So, kaya nga siya non-resident citizen, nandun siya sa abroad. So, ang kinikita niya sa abroad, hindi kailangan file ng income tax return. What about oh, the, the resident alien? He is also required to file his income tax return on the income derived from within the Philippines. Wala tayong pakialam sa income niya, derived niya sa abroad because he is an alien. And what mm. about the non-resident alien engaged in trade or business? Uh, uh, just like a resident alien, he is only sub required to file his income tax return on the income he derives within the Philippines. Now, so who are not those? Uh, who are those individuals who are not required to file an income tax return? Kanina na banggit ko na yung substituted filing. Okay, so pag you are qualified to the substituted filing hindi ka na nagpa-file ng return because what is the reason? Because the government has already, already collected all your taxes, <laughs> all the tax that you need to pay. Why? Because you have, you have been subjected to the withholding tax by your employer. So why is there a need to file more for, for your income tax return? Next, a minimum wage earner. Why? He's not required because he is exempt from income tax. And that's, that's his... Uh, that's the favor that we can give to the minimum wage earner because they are exempt from income tax. What about senior citizens? Most of the time, some senior citizens would ask me, Uy, hindi na ako magpo-file ng income tax return na. Sabi ko, bakit? Eh, di ba nagpo-practice ka? Eh, oo, eh, senior na ako. No, not all senior citizens should not file their income tax return. You only, you are only exempt to file your income tax return if your income is just like the income of a minimum wage earner. You are an employee who, whose income is just like the income of the minimum wage earner. That's the only time that you are exempt from filing the income tax return. What about the sole, uh, where, where your sole income is subject to the final withholding tax? Like, meron tayo mga deposit sa banko and when you withhold and tie in the bank, which is subject to the 20% final withholding tax. We don't need to to get the records of the bank and include it in our income tax return. Why? Because that has been subject to the final withholding tax. And a final withholding tax is a final tax. Kaya sinasabing final withholding tax, that is a final tax. And it's not our obligation to file anything because it is the withholding agent, who is the, which is the bank, who does it for us. Okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, oh, so what about the non-resident citizens? 
you're not required to file income tax return kasi wala naman sila dito, di ba? So, kung, pero kung meron silang business dito, yun, kailangan file sila, nila ng income tax return. And mm-hmm. the resident alien who is not engaged in trade or business in the Philippines, they are not required to file income tax return because even if they derive income within the Philippines, sino ang nagpo-collect ng tax nila? It is the withholding agent. Kung sino man yung kadil nila, kasi sila ay non-resident citizen, alien, wala silang residence here. So, uh, uh, like, like yung mga seniors abroad, pumupunta dito, for days lang, they earn, they earn a lot. But, mm. we do not require them to file income tax return. Why? Because it is the promoter, which is, who is the withholding agent here. And they are the ones who file the, the withholding tax or any in behalf of the non-resident agent. Oh, Ayan. thank you. Emily, so I think that really sums up, no? <laughs> the entire marami yes, pantanong. Yes, yes, of course. Marami pantanong, but I guess uh, uh, we lack the time kasi, ano, Miss Evelyn? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so therefore, we would like to thank you so much, uh, Attorney Ellen, uh, Attorney Rossi. Rossi, for being yes. with us tonight. Marami kaming natutunan. At alam ko, maraming tanong ang ating mga viewers. Pero uh, unfortunately, sorry, hindi natin mata- masasagot ngayon. At yung mga shoutouts nila, hindi natin mababasa. Sayang naman. Pero maraming salamat sa ating mga tagapakinig at saka sa ating viewers. Attorney Rossi, thank you so much. Attorney well, Wright? Yes, and thank you to the UST Alumni Association. Uh, the UST Law Alumni uh, Foundation and also the Accounting and uh, uh, Alumni Association. And uh, to all alumni, follow us uh, on Facebook at UST Alumni Association Inc. And visit our website no, at UST Alumni Association. And please like and share our pages. Now support the Tomasian Alumni Community Exchange, uh, the online marketplace where uh, Tomasian alumni sellers and buyers meet. And uh, of course, uh, we have to okay. specialize. And of course, I'll go ahead. Go ahead, Miss Evelyn. Yeah, and of course, we would like to thank the College of Accountancy Alumni Association, headed by Mr. Louis Turgo. Salamat for sponsoring this show tonight. And uh, we have two special items, the Cargasus, a beautiful storybook, uh, for young and old alike, written by Father Edgardo Alauni, OP, Regent of the College of Fine Arts and Design. It features beautiful paintings. We also have a set of Katinka products in beautifully painted wooden box. Okay? Yes. Uh, and of course, thank you to our BOT uh, members and to all the volunteers of the association and to all the staff of the RCBC. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Join us on Sunday, March 28 at 6 p.m. Ito, ako marami na naman tayong natututunan. Alamin natin kung saan may libre legal assistance at kung paano ito makukuha. Uh, ang guest natin next time will be the president of the Civil Law Alumni Foundation, si Attorney Maria Elenita Francisco. Diba? Yes. And uh, she yes. is also the president no, of the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, Manila Chapter. Attorney Dwight? Yes, and uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, this evening here at Bridges. We do not build walls, we build connections of learning, we build connections of people. Goodbye. And here at CBRC, we build bridges of faith, bridges of hope, and bridges of love. Thank you very much to all our viewers. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Good night. Welcome to Bridges here at CBRC.tv. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers around the world. Hi, good evening, Dr. Evelyn Songko. At sa mga viewers ng ating Bridges, 
Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Again. Another... And hello, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to our uh, viewers on Bridges here on CBRC.TV.